All right, so this video will be how to troubleshoot a PowerFlex 525 drive. Um, some common things that you just can look at and easy ways to go about it. Um, this can be still used through your uh, your actual ACD file. I don't currently have an ACD file with that uh, the PowerFlex drive installed in it. So what I'm going to do is open up CCW, which is Connected Components Workbench. And then I can upload the drive to see its actual current state, what its history is. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to Discover. Okay. So in Discover, what that's going to do is going to open up Links, which is your conductivity browser. We're going to come in here and we're going to find our drive, which is the 192.168.131. It's going to then upload the drive itself, all the components and all the stuff that it has inside of it. Now we did just flash the firmware. So keep in mind, we do have limited things that we probably are going to see. You can look at the faults though, any kind of faults that you have. Um, let's just say I push the e-stop on the drive. You can see right there, it does say safety open. So you can come in here and actually see that and then you can click more about that. Um, the cool thing about this is it does explain to you, you know, a little bit about drive and parameters and stuff like that. If you wanted to come over here and look at that, the one I highly recommend though is going to the help file down here and then going over to manuals and then going to the actual product man like the product manual which is going to be the PowerFlex 525. So if you were curious on the fault itself, you can see and come over here and just basically open that up. Now at that portion of time, what you can do is just go over here. If you wanted to quickly find something inside of like this document right quick, you can go into find and then we'll look at faults. Uh, so you can look at the fault groups Let's say uh, we had an instance of a safety open. So we can just say safety, as long as you spell it correctly, it will work. <laughs> safety open. And we'll see where that finds that. You can see that right there is the parameters. We'll keep navigating down and we'll see that. And we'll, like, let's, let's see if we can't get that a little bit bigger for you to see. You can see right here, it's the safety open and they are enabled. Uh, we can come over here and look at this. This is just the enable stuff. This is, this actually shows the fault. So if you have like a, on to, on the drive itself, if you, it's going to display F059, if it has an open safety and this tells you things to check, right? So this Obviously, in our case, I just pushed an e-stop, um, but it does tell you what you can check if, like, say, you were troubleshoot or the drive was running perfectly and all of a sudden it just dropped the safety. You know, there could be a broken wire. It could be something that, that happened out in the field. It could be, you know, a lot of things can happen. So troubleshooting that, you can easily go into here and see some of the things you need to do. So I'm just showing you that to, to say, there's an easy way for you to find that and that's going out to, to to this actual product manual you got product help you have your product manual so you can go to product help as well and you can see right here that's even quicker so you can see all your parameters you can go in here and you can look at the fault list if you whatever fault you're currently having you can go in here and see the miss like all oh, just just really kind of common things it's not going to give you exactly everything but it will explain to you overloads and stuff like that, how to troubleshoot it. Uh, you can see right here, like power loss, um, under voltage, you can see what to do with under voltage, over voltage, you can see what's happening right here. Uh, you monitor the voltage um, and it does explain to you, like you can change the XL D cell if you have a stall issue, motor overload, you can, you can change a couple things. Uh, generally speaking though, when you have things like that, you, and especially uh, a ground fault. It's going to be something that's done with the wiring, right? Um, you again, phase to ground. You can do phase to ground. Phase to ground is going to be, uh, which is UVW, right? So phase to ground will be the same thing. It will be a actual connection out in the field somewhere. It's not going to be the drives. Generally speaking, it's not going to be the drive unless you have a bad section of the drive, which 
highly unlikely. Generally speaking, it's going to be in the field. I've seen that more often than not. So just keep in mind that's a that's a very helpful tool. Uh, when you pull the e stop back out, you can clear the fault. Like you can come in and and in this case you can take control of it, and then we can kind of you know go through that method. Um, resetting. Just keep in mind I think that resets the default, so don't do that. Um, resetting the drive. You can come over here and, and reset the drive if you want to. Um, let's see if we go into faults and we clear we clear the trip. That does not clear the trip. It doesn't clear the fault that we currently have. So again, actually, let me pull the e-stop out and then hit the clip there. There we go. We cleared the trip with that. So clear trip is going to reset that but clearing your queue is going to get rid of all the stuff in the queue so if you hit this it's going to get rid of everything so now if i hit an e-stop again the only thing in there is going to be that e-stop and then you can clear that queue right here so if you're troubleshooting a drive and you have a weird instance of a fault or whatever the case may be connection loss or whatever uh, stop asserted you know you'll you can have a whole bunch of different faults but the key thing about using CCW is the helpful thing is using these help files the manual the product systems manual right which comes with it or going to be the, the product help so that's just a quick way to go in there and actually troubleshoot faults and stuff like that so hopefully that was helpful also um, I'm a big component of drive executive too um, just to keep in mind I don't have that you know actually installed on this VM but when it comes down to it, you can use Drive Executive for the same thing. Although CCW is more helpful when it comes to pro the the actual looking for the manual and stuff of that nature. Um, so with that said, you can do the same exact thing in the ACD file. Okay, so in your <clears throat> in your PLC file, right? If you open up your PLC and you're in your IO tree, you can open this up. Oh, and it's going to look very very similar right you're going to have a splash window up here you're going to have all your parameters you're going to have everything in there and then you go to faults if you're having problems you can see all the faults and all the history of the faults if you have if you're if you're saying okay i want to start from here um and then move forward if i think i fixed the problem then you can clear the queue and then see if it happens again right say if you leave overnight and then you know you think you got the problem fixed and then all of a sudden the problem comes back you can go back and look at the history so it does keep a good history of what happens so if i hit the e-stop again if, if it has to really change if that makes sense it, it can't be the same fault every time because if it's the same fault then you need to come over here and clear the queue and then if i hit the e-stop again it's going to go ahead and give me that fault again um, so with that said, that's a couple quick little tips that I do to help troubleshoot. Um, I know uh, there's multiple, multiple ways of doing that. But again, I found at least on the 525, the CCW is very helpful and it, it matches up with the, the Studio 5000 ACD file as well. So those two mesh really, really well. And that's a very helpful way to actually troubleshoot any kind of faults or anything like that that you may be having. Hopefully that was helpful and we'll see you guys on the next one.
Okay, so it's important to know that once it actually finishes the complete download, it's going to poll for a power cycle. So it's going to basically power up. And this does give a default time of like a, a, a timer for the countdown. It has to actually come back up and actually go through its process and then come back up with that, that actual time. So just keep in mind, it, that's, that's part of the completion phase. Now, it is coming back up. It's actually, you know, the drive is actually coming and saying what it is. So as soon as that happens, we, we should get an indication that shows that the firmware is complete. And it, there's a nice green symbol that does show us that. Now, again, um, we're waiting on it to finish the poll and the check and the, and the make sure everything is 100% correct. You can see that the time does change somewhat of the time but you can see right here is where we were looking for and then you can see a nice green indication that the firmware was complete and it was successful just click ok and you have now updated the firmware of your drive you can double check that again going through rs links and then verifying your rs links is the same firmware that you just downloaded so with that said, hopefully that was educational on how to show you how to download the firmware or upload the firm or update the firmware to a drive. Um, you can do the same thing. Like if you wanted to flash it backwards, you could flash it backwards if you wanted to. But again, when it comes down to it, it depends on your situation, right? Are you in one of those pharmaceutical things that is highly regulated or are you trying to push forth and make the drive more compatible with say, you know, like a different uh, AOP or a different uh, software, in, meaning, are you trying to make it compatible with, you know, like a version 33 or th for 30, 35 or even 36? Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, this is a, a solid process on how to, you know, actually use Control Flash to flash the firmware of a drive, at least the PowerFlex 525. So keep that in mind, and hopefully that was helpful, and we'll see you guys on the next one.